here we got Mr. Flow Power on number one. Let's hope Flow Power is a premium member. <clears throat> 21.52. I'm trying to not make a big difference. I'll just click on whoever name, whoever name, whoever name appears first on the list. On the list. Of course, I hope to keep my opponents as weak as possible to have a clean score. But if you're a premium member, I'm trying not to play favorites and just click on whoever I see. There we go. Flow power goes 1d4. I'll go with a move knight f6 this time around. I think I went last time around with it too. c4 and I played g6. I can't really play the king's Indian, but I've always had a soft spot for the Grunfeld. I'm not a big big expert. I really still am not and I should find the time to study it more. As I mentioned earlier, my 1d4 repertoire is a bit of a point of concern at the moment. But I still do know a thing or two, so of course this is whining on a decent level. He plays one of the main lines which I've played with white myself, the knight f3, bishop e3, queen d2 line. After rook c1, black faces a choice between rook d8 and the move bishop to g4. Both of those very playable. I'm not sure which one I like better. I'll go with rook d8 for this game just to see what he's up to. Then after d5, e6, we get some very complicated theoretical battles. <clears throat> Trying to remember what I do if he doesn't go d5 but instead plays bishop e2. Not sure it's legal for me to call Peter Svidler during the game. I'm afraid it's not, so I'm going to have to figure it out myself. d5 is the main move here. What do we do? Okay, I can stop worrying about bishop e2 since it did not happen. d5, e6, bishop g5. This is <clears throat> one of the main lines. I think Grishuk was the guy who came up with his novelty rook to d6 here. Let's try it once. I think there was a move repetition after bishop f4, rook d8. Then I would have to do something else to avoid that. But black was doing kind of struggling after f6 and then just bishop back to e3, even though... Well, struggling is strong, but there was a theoretical discussion going on in those lines. And rook d6 was Grishuk's contribution, just not weakening his position with the move f6 yet. However, if he cowardly flow power your life on the air, if you try to repeat moves, of course, I will blame you for it nonstop since I'll go f6. Should that go wrong, I will whine. But he doesn't and plays bishop e2, when it's once again my turn to worry. Not quite sure what to do here. Takes... Looks very logical. And after e takes d, typical move would be the move c4. Intending after bishop takes c4 to then develop the pieces quickly without allowing white to get in c4. I'm not sure this is a good idea here. I really should study those lines in a bit more detail. But it looks like a logical move to me at least. Bishop takes c4 seems logical as well when I'm planning to just go knight to d7. He doesn't take it, he just castles, but now I can take a pawn, right? <coughs> I will. Let's see what's going on. Still slightly worrying rook d5, queen e3. And... <coughs> well, c4 is still hanging. Now let's... <laughs> I was going to say let's take it and then think, but that's a bit of... A risky approach in a position like this, which is very, very concrete. Safe move would probably be to play queen takes d5, queen d5, rook d5, bishop c4, and something like rook c5, and then try to get the pieces out. <clears throat> Not sure. <clears throat> yeah, I can't, I can't make rook d5 work. I'm scared. I'll go queen d5. Which also looks a bit clumsy. I have, to, I have to study that opening. Flow power is winning the theoretical discussion here. No question about it. Rook c5 and it looks, looks unpleasant my position. Gotta be honest because my pieces are a little underdeveloped and my king is a little weak. Feeling I might have to go bishop e6 probably rather sooner than later. If I go knight c6 as knight g5 in the air. Now go for bishop e6, which I'm not thrilled to play because I'll end up with a weak pawn on e6. But it looks like the most sensible way to get the pieces out. And there's certainly homework to be done here. I have to study Svidler's Grunfeld series or analyze the position or both. He plays rook d1, 
which I think I'm happy to see because now I can go knight c6 and at least get one more piece out. Bishop e6, pawn takes, rook d7. Still not overly pleasant, I gotta admit. Hmm. <clears throat> what do I do after rook d7? Could play b6, that's the most ambitious. It all feels a little loose, but yeah. <clears throat> Let's try it. <clears throat> Keep the pawn. The one source of counterplay I have is that the c3 pawn is still weak. However, my king is weakened, so I have a slightly bad feeling about all of these positions. Knight g5s are in the air constantly. But what can you do? I'll keep defending as long as it works. Rook e8, just keep the pawn on e6 for now. e5 looks quite ugly positionally. And one day I hope I can eat the pawn on c3. And I hope that day is soon. Knight e4 looks like a very logical move now when I'm planning to go rook to d5. He goes bishop e3, baiting me to take on c3. <clears throat> My pawn h7 is hanging, so it's by no means a no-brainer. But I still think I should do it. I'm not losing material, it seems like. I have some knight to d4 trick if he takes and goes rook to c7. Which he does. Maybe I am losing material. <laughs> Trouble! What, what are you gonna do? I'll play knight d4. The trick was rook c3, knight e2. But I got very, very concerned after I spotted the move knight e4 or knight takes h7 here. Knight e4, I'll have to go rook b5 and try to hang around. Knight b5, I'm sorry. Plays king f1 first when I should also play knight b5. <clears throat> Fighting for my life here. It doesn't look very pleasant, but I think I am still alive. And goes to show you gotta do your homework. Flopar really teaching me a thing or two about this Grunfeld line in this game. I'm gonna have to check it out. Rook c4. Now it looks like I kind of survived, right? I'm a pawn up. Bishop f6. Yeah, I think there is reasons to be slightly less concerned about the future now. A4, let's put this knight here. Yes, he's gonna go rook c7 back and I have some choice. I could take on g5 <clears throat> or play rook to e7. Rook e7 returns the pawn, which my greedy nature does not like me to do. What about knight f5? He can go knight h7, but then I think I can trap his knight. Let's try it. <clears throat> Should probably go knight to e4. And he does. He's really playing well, this guy. <clears throat> what are you going to do? Should be e5. Rook takes a7. I'll take on e3. Maybe I can get away with taking h2, but no, I don't think I can. So I should try to activate my rook, bishop h2, g3, looked a bit dangerous, rook e7. Try to chase this knight away, which is very well placed on e4. I'm gonna have to become very quiet briefly because I'm also running short of time. Flopa are really putting me under a lot of pressure here. You're aware there's a live show, it's all fun and games. Don't play so well. Mm. Knight f2 has been played, I'll take on a4. Which is a terrible move because it's gonna be very hard to defend my b6 pawn, which is a pawn I really want to keep now. But what are you gonna do? Um, nah, can't can't go too crazy passive. I'm gonna have to go for this. And yeah, I did not achieve any advantage. I hate to admit it, but it is the truth. King g7, I'm gonna have to speed up a little bit from now. Yeah, king g7, terrible move once again. Sorry if I turn real quiet, but <laughs> I don't have a lot of time left. <clears throat> of course, I could chicken out and offer a draw, but that will not live up to my promise of crushing everybody. Hmm. <clears throat> Rook ending is kind of drawn, but I can try for a couple moves, I believe. <clears throat> I'll probably, probably those are losing attempts more than winning attempts. 
But why not? Rook d4. <laughs> really, I'm trying to lose this game. <clears throat> oh, that's bad luck for Mr. Flow Power. He pre moved Rook to b5. Yeah, I feel kind of guilty about winning this one. So I will write a written apology. That was a very good game and I suffered through most of it and it should have ended in a draw. But what are you gonna do? I don't think I was being very unfair there. I honestly tried to make some winning attempts in the rook ending, but tremendous game by Mr. Flow Power. Oof, almost need a breather after this one, but no time. Let's see who's next. Until recently, chess was like this. Chess 24 brought you this. Live interactive broadcasts from top tournaments with computer analysis and video commentary by the likes of Jan Gustafsson, Lawrence Trent and Peter Fiddler. A play zone where you can take on opponents from all around the world 24-7. Interactive beginners courses, ensuring you pick up the basics fast while having fun. A tactics trainer to sharpen your chess by solving puzzles adapted to your level. Hundreds of interactive videos, letting you watch and learn from star players such as Vichy Anand, Peter Svidler, Paco Vajejo and Hu Yufan. You've given up on that outdated computer? That's why there are more reasons to use Chess24 on mobiles and tablets. Full play zone access, including pre-move. A tactics trainer so you can stay sharp wherever you are. Computer opponents you can challenge even when you're not online. Live broadcasts of top chess events. And the half? It's free! Well, that's half true. Most features are free, but limited for registered members. For a mere 99 euros per year, however, you can step up to premium membership and gain unlimited access to our video library. That and much more. See you at chess24.com.